Hello and welcome to another tutorial and a free plugin called XFX Matrix. It's designed to emulate the look from the popular film and as a new version will be out soon, we thought there'd be a good demand for this style again. You can either download this for free or follow the instructions on how to build your own. But before we go any further, a like, a comment and a subscription would be appreciated. It all helps the YouTube algorithm and we have lots more coming. OK, back to the plugin and you'll find XFX Matrix under XFX Free. That's in the title sidebar in Final Cut. All I need to do is drag that down onto the timeline and here you can see we've got the effect. Simple as that. Now, a few things before we go any further. First of all, you will need to download a free font for um, that matrix because that's not included in Final Cut Pro. That's fairly easy. The uh, link for that is on the Industrial Revolution website. And secondly, the it, it's pretty intensive wise, all those characters. So if you've got a really old Mac, it might struggle trying to play those. Um, you should be all right rendering, but even my machine's having a good go there because of the um, of the tasks it's trying to do. OK, let's have a look at some of the controls in the inspector. They're actually quite simple because I think if you really want to customize this, you need to go into motion and I'll be showing you how to build this in motion in just a while. Um, so you'll be able to pick up how to modify it. We have a text control here that you can turn on and off, whether you want the um, actual letters or not. The matrix, um, the font is all in uppercase. So it needs to all be in uppercase, otherwise it won't work properly. You will actually get a substitution there. You can see that doesn't look right with the X. Um, and also there's a little Easter egg as well in here. If you actually tap in at um, into your keyboard, I've got to remember where it is. That's two. Uh, it's control two, isn't it? You actually get the whole matrix logo, which is quite fun, but we don't want that yet. So go back to the matrix. Um, we've got the size. We can vary that. And we've also got a light on it as well. So we've got the intensity of that. Got the cone angle and the soft edge. We can see we've got a nice vignette on here, which makes it look great. And these checkboxes down here are actually the layers. If you can't, if you want to actually try something without having all the layers on at the same time, then you can just toggle a few of these off and it gets simpler and should run and play and you should be okay with that. So really easy controls on there. You have actually got access to the, um, the, the graphic style as well. If you go into the inspector to look at the styles and you can see it's 3D, we've got actually nickel and we've colored it um, green. You can make it another color, for example, should you want to do something funky? Maybe not, but you've got access to all of that, the depth, and you can really customize that. Should you want to customize the plugin, you can either right click and go open in motion and that should open it up in motion or you can find it in the templates folder in movies and you can open it up there and that should open up in motion as well. Save and then go back to Final Cut Pro and your new version should be there. So how do you go about building this plugin for scratch? I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that should get you on the right track. I mean, it's a bit complicated. I mean, it took me a while to get the look I wanted to, but this will show you the bare basics. So we've started off with a new motion project here. It's a title because we want access to the text controls in the inspector, but we don't want that text. So we'll delete that. And if you've seen any of the tutorials before, you normally know that I turn this background off, but I leave it there because I might need it in the future. Right. Make another group and we're going to call that, um, let's call it layer one, shall we? And I'm going to add some text into that layer. That's going to be flat text to start off with. And let's say that's A. I need to center that and then also center that in the screen. That's fine. And we've just got a simple A. Let's start somewhere. Push the size up a bit as well. Now we want loads of A's and the way to do that is to make it into an emitter or particles and you need to go into the menu and go object, make particles. And here you can see we've now got an emitter emitting from the center and we've got loads of A's that go out from the center and they eventually they die off. But in the inspector, you'll notice two things. We've got the emitter controls and the cell controls. And to get the effect that we want, we're going to have to play around with both. So we've got just the A at the moment and it's coming from the center. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to make it emit from a line at the top of the screen rather than a point. Now, 
first of all, I need to pull this emission range down because at the moment it's emitting in 360 degrees. So if I pull that down, it all goes in one direction. Okay, now this angle I can also alter. So I'm going to maybe put that down to 270. Everything works on sensible numbers and angles. And now you can see we've got a load of A's missing from that point. Okay, not great. What I want is I want to emit from a line at the top of the screen. So I'm going to go into line. That's changed the angle, so I need to put that back down to what we're going to say is zero, isn't it? Not 360. And here you can see we're emitting from a line, but it's not very big. So I'm going to actually extend this line out. Let's go minus a thousand. And because we've done that, minus a thousand, not minus 100. Rook here. And 1000 on for the other side. And you can see we're starting to get there with the emitting. OK, but it's not in the right place and it doesn't look really at all like what we're after yet. OK, let's stop that. We're going to push that up to the top of the screen and play around with the emitter controls. Now, they are dying off down the bottom here. OK, no problem. That's the life. So you can push the life up. There we go. Maybe a bit too far. We'll get to the end here. And you can see there they are coming up the screen. Right, OK, what next? OK, well, let's do the colour um, because that obviously um, is green. And at the moment it's saying original, which is white. So we're going to colourise on there, but we're probably going to say pick from colour range. And that's a nice range of colours, but it's the wrong colours. So we're going to go into there and we'll pick this and we're going to go green. There we go. And this one will be another green. But I'm going to toggle. Let's just move that so we can see it. The saturation out of it. Yeah, or maybe the darkness. That's a bit more like it. And we're getting there with the kind of effect that we want. And also we need to do the color, mo color mode, additive blend, pick from color range. And there you go. But they're all going down the screen at the same speed, which is, again, which is not what we want. So we can actually adjust the speed. Let's make that a bit quicker and speed randomness. And there we have, we're, we're beginning to get there as we've got one obvious fault. And that's the fact that it's all A's. Now, I think motion has changed in a few editions ago where you could actually use um, a timeline source, a clone layer to go into the particle emitter, which is down here. You can, here you can see we've got our A. And that would cycle through whatever was in um, the clone layer. Now, you can't do that and you can't put a folder from here that has maybe, uh, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H um, on the timeline and drop that in. It won't work. It won't cycle through those. So you've got two methods of doing this. You can either make another motion project that's really small and put A, B, C, D, whatever letters you want in there, render that out and do one character per frame and then bring that back into motion or uh, Apple have done the hard work for you. Well, to get kind of like 90% there, because if you look at the um, matrix uh, graphics, they're actually kind of like not all alphanumeric. There's some odd ones in there. But if you look at the media, well, I'm going to look at the library and I'm going to look at content. It actually has a thing called ASCII here, which is exactly what we want. OK, so I'm going to drop that into the media. And go back to inspector. We need to go obviously go back to the layers and look at the cell. And here we've got the A, then go to media. Now this is really cool. Drop this ASCII movie in. And we've got this random load of text coming down. How great does that look? That was super easy, wasn't it? So 
all you need to do is go back to your emitter and play around with the controls. You can up the um, amount of points on the line. Um, so you've got emitter points, I believe. There we go. We toggle that off at some point. Emitter points. And you can say, right, I want a load of these. Let's put a load in. See if it plays back and turn the screen off. And maybe that's going a bit too quick, cycling through. So, OK, no problem. Down here, play frames. Um, and there is a speed control down on here. Uh, let's play frames. I'll stick on that. Oh, frames, that's it. You just turn the whole frames up slightly and then you still get the cascading down and they change. And if you look at this, so X, K, 8, and that's all completely random. And there's a C control on here. If you um, got layers that are similar, you can just hit that and it'll randomize them even more. And that's basically how you make the look and you just layer it up and control the speed. Um, uh, you can control um, how many points you have emitting to try and get that matrix looking effect. I think in the plugin, I've got about four layers going at once. So that's two different layers and then two layers that I've cloned and flipped around and made them different. So I'm not using a load of emitters um, to try and get that look. Should you want to colorize everything, you just need to go into um, this control here and change the start, uh, we'll change the range of the colors that you need to, uh, you want to colorize. It's not something that's really, really easy to publish to Final Cut Pro because not only have I got more than one of them, but there's colors front and back. Um, so really, if you want to customize it, either, as I said, go into motion for that. OK, that's the first bit done. We've built the background and now we're going to have a look at generating the text. So I'm back in motion, same project, but this time I'm going to do some text. I've got the background turned off, but I'm going to go new layer and call this. Let's call it text, be really, really original. And I'm going to add some 3D text. Let's call that. Uh, let's tap in um, the matrix. What I need to do is center that and center the properties. That's fine. Yep, it's on the line, so that's right. And we want a bigger size on there for a startup. So get text. Yep. Okay, but that's the wrong font. So the font you need, you have to download. The link is on the website, and it's called Matrix. And there you go, that's a great effect to start off with. It's a bit Harry Potter as well, isn't it? Now let's have a look at adjusting the um, materials that are on there. Okay, so we are going to go to appearance. And I ended up using nickel, so that's metal. Nickel. But I ended up colorizing it to be green. Let's go for the straight green on there. There we go. And also what I did is I put, I think I put some, um, add a layer and I went to um, distress. I think it was dense or something like that, that I put in to make that look. Yeah, you can see it's just taking the edge off the graphics here by putting some dents in to make it look a lot rougher, which um, if you look at the new um, trailer, that's exactly what the text looks like. It looks a bit bumpy on there, but this is 3D, but I'm going to make Project 3D, so we can see it. So, okay, so I'm going to add a camera. New camera. Yeah, switch to 3D. And then in perspective, you should be able to see that this is in 3D. Yep. On there. Okay. But nothing moves on there, and we want it to. And maybe I'm just going to increase the depth of... There you go. You can see... Uh, the actual depth of the letters on there. Now I'm going to add some rotation to the characters and you could do this by selecting each one and then doing a keyframe, but it'd be, it would take forever and you won't be able to adjust it easily, which is the key to making good graphics is fine tuning. You know, take a look at it, fiddle with a few things and keep fine tuning it till you exactly get everything exactly right. The great thing about motion is it has behaviors and this behavior is brilliant. I use it a lot. 
So let's go up to the library, behaviors, and in text animation as sequence text. Drop that on, and nothing happens. Okay, you need to configure it. Okay, go into the inspector. And we are going to get this sequence text uh, behavior to work on the rotation. So go down, go format rotation. And at the moment, um, it's only giving you one parameter. If you toggle down, you'll see all of them. So what I want to do is I want to give it some Z rotation so the characters rotate like, like that. Well, some of them do. OK, how do I adjust that? There's a thing called spread, which if I push that up, which now that should be adjusting all of them. Yeah, and you can see that they're adjusting all of them. But if I start off at the start, that's kind of like way off, which I don't, don't want. Let's put that down to say something like, um, let's put that to 90. And that's easy because it's actually going to end up with them all being upright. So thinking kind of like you really want to start text off and then animate it in. But we want to do it the other way around. So that's not a problem because we can actually say animate two. And then when we play that, we get the animation. But they're all going in the right way and it all looks a bit too nice. How do we kind of make it look a bit more grungy? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually add some variance to that, and that's between minus 100 to 100%. So if I increase the variance, you see all the letters start to move independently of each other. And that's exactly what we want. Right, now if you don't like the type of randomness, you can actually go down here and where it says seed, you can just keep clicking this button until you get a kind of display that you like. Actually, that's not too bad, is it? So there we go. But then again, the H and the E go in the same direction. So maybe we'll try hitting it again. Just just play around with it till you get one that you like. Okay, maybe that's going a bit too far and too quick. We'll back that off. And there we have the text starting. I think that's a bit too slow now, isn't it? Let's okay, let's go say something like 60. And there we go. The text is rotating around the z-axis. That's the axis going through the screen. Now we also want to add another one, and I will actually go and add another one because I found copying and pasting didn't really work. I've got some really strange behaviors behaviors going on, no pun intended. So I'll add another sequence text. Let's call this um X. Axis, and this one we're going to do on the y axis. Now that's z axis, isn't it? Get that right. And we're going to call that, I think it's we're doing the y, aren't we? Y axis. I'll have to change it back to z if I get it wrong. Okay, so in the inspector, we've got y axis, this one at the top here, and we're going to add that to format again we're going to rotation and looking back down here i'm going to play with the y there you go we did get it right so push that up and again we do the same spread out and we're going to okay so we've got that and they're twisting as well as you can see that looks great but again they're all doing the same thing you want to change the variance, push up the variance, and we should now have the graphics that are rotating in two dimensions on the y axis and the z axis. So if we go right to the end, you'll be able to see that. Yeah, as you can see, look, if we've got the T that's turned in two axes onto the camera. And it's a it's really a case of trial and error with the controls to get the exact look that you want. I mean that's not too far off, is it? On there. Um, and then if I put the layer back in, now it needs a lot of work, needs a lot of layers. We need the um, light. Well, why don't we put the light in while we're here? Okay, let's go object, uh, new light, which it immediately makes it look a lot better. And I think what I did also is I turned the, I think the 3D text comes with its own light, if I remember rightly. So if I go to there, and I think I need to turn that off with this environment. Yeah, there we go. That makes it look a lot better, doesn't it? On there. 
And then you've got access to the light, which is the things I published, which was um, the cone angle. Um, yeah, we actually used a uh, directional light there. No, we didn't. It was a spot. There we go. And yeah, you can see the cone angle. Um, we need to increase the cone angle there. Bit of soft edge. But that's really how it was made. So if we have a look at the final motion project, which is this one here, you'll see exactly the same principles. We've got the text coming down. We've got the rotating text. It just takes a while to render that because there's a lot going on. And this first layer is exactly what we use. So that's the emitter and the ASCII uh, source. And then we've got two clones, slightly moved. I think one's flipped round on the um, y-axis. And then we've got a background layer, which is actually quite a lot of emitters in a box shape behind there. Um, but here you go, exactly the same. Uh, two sequence text behaviors on there to control that and a little bit of an animation. That's a, the um, opacity coming up and um, a bit of a zoom to give you the plugin. So we're back in Final Cut and as you can see, we've got the plugin here. I've shown you both techniques to generate the background. OK, you might want to, as, as I said, kind of like duplicate that up a bit to give you the bit more depth or maybe render out a self-contained movie and then bring it back in and use um, different versions of that. That might help as well. Um, but it does actually play on the system. I mean, this is unrendered and it does actually play. Uh, that's a uh, 1920 by 1080 project. I also showed you how to do the matrix, how to uh, do the text. That's a free font. Again, you will need to download that. The web address is on the Industrial Revolution uh, site on the product page. Uh, 3D text showed you how to do that and also showed you how to use the text sequence behavior to rotate the text to give you that twisting in two dimension or three dimension even look, which is great. So there you have it, another free plugin. We've got a lot more coming along, so don't forget to subscribe. If you liked it, press the like button. It does help, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.